The opening prayer will be given by the Vice Mayor, Angela Williams, and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and all the blessings and opportunities it has brought us. Thank you for the abundance of blessings you have bestowed upon this great city. Father, we pray that you would continue to bless our city, bless every resident who resides within its boundaries, and every employee who works to make it great. As the children and young people in our city return to school, cover them, put a hedge of protection around them, and keep them safe from all harm. Bless this council and our city manager as we labor in the calling of public service. Give us wisdom, compassion, and love to, to serve our people and let all we do glorify you. These and all other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you very much. The uh, clerk will call the roll, please. Yeah. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Protogiru? Here. I'm here Mr. Mr. Riddick? Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protogiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, the clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protogiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. Thanks uh, for coming out tonight. Um, the process which we will follow for tonight's meeting is the first thing we're going to do is take up the public hearings. At the conclusion of all the public hearings, we have a number of them. We will then move to the regular agenda items. Uh, and then once we've finished, we'll vote on all of those in just the way they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of the uh, regular agenda, we will uh, hear from any member of the public who would like to address the City Council on non-agenda items. And we have uh, several of you have uh, elected to do that. In order to have your name called, all you have to do is, is sign a slip of paper which the clerk has made available in the lobby uh, behind the council chambers before the meeting began. So um, we do have one uh, really special uh, ceremonial matter uh, before the meeting uh, begins. And uh, Kurt Hoflick here from uh, Norfolk General Hospital, the administrator here is about to make, a, would like to make a presentation about the United Way. Kurt, it's good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for coming down tonight. Glad to be here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor and members of City Council, uh, my name is Kurt Hoflick, a United Way volunteer and member of the United Way of Southampton Roads Chairman's Cabinet for Key Corporate and City Campaigns. It's an honor to be here this evening to thank you, uh, the City Manager, Mr. Jones, uh, all the City staff and the City of Norfolk employees for your support of our community through your participation in United Way. As a community, we depend on you to keep us safe, to give us places to play and recreate, uh, to create an environment to grow our businesses, and to provide education for our children, and I could go on. Uh, when we have an issue, we often turn to you uh, for your help and support. Uh, today, we are here to thank you for your generous support of the United Way. Last year, the City of Norfolk employees raised nearly $155,000 through the United Way campaign, and over the last five years, the City of Norfolk employees raised nearly $800,000 for our community. Uh, you joined others in Southampton Roads uh, to make good things happen uh, right here in Norfolk, and here's a little bit about what's happening in Norfolk. Eight children and families receive school tutoring, child care, and programs to reinforce positive behaviors in our city's youth. 31,997 neighbors were rescued uh, during times of emergency, uh, such as abuse and homelessness. 4.1 million meals, that's million meals, were distributed to the hungry 
in Norfolk, 437, uh, 4,379 disabled and elderly uh, received health service, education, and support. So on behalf of a grateful community, we'd like to present you uh, with this plaque and a heartfelt thank you for your generosity. I'll note uh, that on this plaque is artwork provided by children uh, who participated in the new United for Children summer education programs in our Young Terrace Norfolk neighborhoods this summer. Uh, this is one very visible United Way collective community impact program demonstrating outstanding <coughs> summer achievement results in academic advancements, among our city's most at-risk youth. This is really just one example of where your generous support uh, assists uh, the city, and it's very a line of sight program. And for that, I uh, just wanted to say thank you on behalf of United Way. Great. Kurt, thank you. Thank you for coming down. Thanks for that important message. The council's honored to accept this uh, on behalf of all of the employees of the city. I want to thank them, manager, for his, you know, for certainly uh, his leadership in this regard as well. And thanks, of course, to the United Way for the great service they provide to all of our citizens, and specifically you, Kurt, and everything you do. I know thank you for being a part of our Poverty Commission as well as the great work you're doing at the hospital. Over there. It's okay? So thanks okay. very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the uh, ceremonial matter we had this evening, so we'll move directly to public hearing one, please. <clears throat> public hearing one scheduled for this day on the application of Norfolk Collegiate School to amend the city's future land use map within the general plan from single family traditional to institutional and for a change of zoning from single family to institutional district on property located at 7307 through 7321 Woodfin Avenue by 6 0 vote planning commission recommends approval. All right, uh, Ch Chappelle Watkins White is here to answer questions if we have any. Okay, you can call the roll. I have two ordinances. The first is an ordinance to amend the city's general plan so as to change the land use designation for properties located at 7307 to 7321 Woodfin Avenue from single family traditional to institutional. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Well, can I address this? Sure. Yes. Just uh, uh, two issues that I think are very important here. First of all, the way that uh, Norfolk Collegiate handled the matter with the neighborhood. Uh, if we had uh, we had received from the suburban parks, suburban acres, Civic League, uh, their flyer, and Chappelle White did a great job. She's counsel for the school. I think she's on the board of trustees. Uh, did a great job in going to the neighborhood, working with the neighborhood, and having the neighborhood vested in Collegiate's project. Uh, Collegiate having been there now 75 years or so uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, also, the second. Uh, aspect is is what is actually occurring there uh, again coming back to part of the renaissance of Ward's Corner uh, Norfolk Collegiate has played a huge role in the renaissance of Ward's Corner and again this will be another step uh, Collegiate what we're seeking to do uh, is uh, I guess what we're being asked to do is and what Collegiate is requesting of us is to place two parallel the fields we have fields that are currently there uh, or that we know of that are there, and that Collegiate is asking that we, that they turn them into turf, uh, and then uh, uh, that they be lit, uh, to have those uh, lit into the evenings, which uh, uh, again carry the level af of athletics to a uh, what, uh, would perceive to be another level, allowing for later uh, start times, uh, times uh, allowing for field hockey to play on a turf field instead of grass. So it's a significant aspect. What makes it even more significant is it's, uh, from what I understand, the only school in the state uh, that is doing this uh, to their athletic, uh, to raise their athletic program to the level that it is, to have two side-by-side -side lit turf fields. So again, it uh, adds to living within the city of Norfolk, uh, as uh, Norfolk Christian has done in that area. Uh, I think Norfolk Collegiate uh, is doing the same. So uh, Chappelle, you've done a great job and it's almost uh, a textbook on how to handle uh, dealing with neighborhoods and uh, how to make things happen. So thank you, and I vote aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second ordinance is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 7307 to 7321 Woodfin Avenue from R7 to IN1. 
dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day on the application of Overbrook Ventures LLC for a change of zoning from R8 to conditional R9 on property located at 2817 through 2821 Overbrook Avenue and by a 1 5 vote, Planning Commission recommends denial. Um, Bobby Feynman, please. There were two members of the public who were signed up to address the council on this matter. Bobby, if you'll just give us your full name and your present name and address. Uh, good evening. Bobby Feynman, 2617 All Saints Court in Virginia Beach. Uh, good evening. Please forgive my attire. I'm the head football coach at Ruffner Middle School, and I came straight from practice to be here tonight, and I okay. didn't have time to change. All right. Um, hopefully, I will be back here in a few months with my team uh, so they can be recognized as champions of the Norfolk Portsmouth Middle School Football League. I'm here tonight seeking your approval for a zoning change at 2821 Overbrook Avenue from R8 single family to R9 single family. I've been working very closely with the Estabrook Civic League and I'm happy to say that they firmly and unanimously support this project. They support it because they want to keep Estabrook a great place to work, live and play and they want a safer neighborhood. Uh, they, are, they are wanting increased home ownership and they want to reduce functional obsolescence and we've worked very closely with them and I hope that you will also um, vote in favor of this as they want it so thank you for your consideration you. I'm standing by Bobby. Uh, William Jackson good afternoon mayor frame and members of the council my name is William D Jackson senior I live at 3709 Buckingham Street in Norfolk in the Estabrook section of the city. I am the treasurer of the Estabrook Civic League. I'm here today to speak for the members of my Civic League in favor of the rezoning of the property at 2817 and 2821 Overbrook Avenue from R8 single family to R9 single family conditional. Our members feel the rezoning of this property as well as maybe others in our neighborhood, would be a good thing for the growth of Estabrook. They directed the president of the Civic League to send a letter of that fact to the Norfolk City Planning Commission, or Planning Department, which she did. She also requested that I speak to the Planning Commission hearing to further emphasize that support. I am here tonight to emphasize that support again to the Norfolk City Council. We think it'd be a good thing for Estabrook. We may be back later on, on a per case basis, to ask for more changes such as this one. I appreciate your contention. Thank you. Thank you, okay, that concludes the list of folks who have signed up to speak. Any comments? Yeah, um, I'd like to know what planning commissioner voted uh, for it. It was what, six to five to one? Five to one, I think. One to five. One to one, one to, to five, five. Yeah. yeah. And the and the reason for voting against it. Is it George here? Or Lenny? Uh -huh. it, it was had to do with the general plan. Mm -hmm. Against the general, general plan. plan. Okay. How you doing? Good to see you. All right. Mr. Mayor, Council, the, the planning commission supported a recommendation from staff to deny this and that was based on an analysis of the lot sizes in the neighborhood it is basic math we looked at the neighborhood there are a little bit over 300 lots 255 of those are larger than 50 feet 43 of those are less than 50 feet mr Feynman's lots are proposed to be 43 feet wide if you look on the street that it's proposed to go on, it's the same uh, ratio of conforming lots to those that are smaller. The uh, one vote in favor from the Planning Commission felt that, as the neighborhood did, that new homes in the community was a plus. But that was the gist of the vote. I'm looking at the uh, uh, a diagram, and it's this yellow. This diagram is in yellow. 
and it has a uh, a star in the middle of it, and but it looks like the uh, the lot is uh, divided disproportionately. Well, it will be redivided should this be approved, mm -hmm. and split down the middle. Right down the middle. There's currently one house that's just been, uh, I think it's just been finished, on the north side of this property. Right. But that line would be moved to split that lot. That lot's 86 feet wide. It'll be 243. And if this is approved, he will divide it down the middle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, before I vote too, um, Marcus, maybe at our retreat, um, we might want to have maybe the planning director there uh, as well as the, uh, the chair of the committee because there's going to be more of these coming. It seems that the uh, staff is reorganized that they are sticking with the general plan and there's a lot of recommendations to deny things, but there's also some mixed uh, things that happen, such as this one where a community is saying that they support it. Um, and then there are other cases where the planning commission will vote for something and say they support it because the community wants it. Um, so maybe we need to have a better understanding of where staff um, and the planning commission are coming from with this because we're gonna be dealing with more of these and you know, it's always been my understanding that the general plan is meant to be changed um, as we deal with these things on a case-by-case -case basis, but we do seek staff's recommendation on this, and they're coming to us saying no, and now the Planning Commission is saying no, but we're getting mixed things on different, different areas, and this to me seems like an easy one. If the community said they wanted it, then the recommendation should have been supporting it, not against it, so. Maybe it's a uh, topic at our retreat. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of homes and a lot of lots in, in the city that are that are a lot smaller than, anyway, yeah. three foot. So, okay, call the roll. I have an ordinance to rezone property located at 2817 and 2821 Overbrook Avenue from R8 single family to conditional R9 single family. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to vote aye, but it, it troubles me to vote opposite of the Planning Commission, but I vote aye on this particular one since the community is in favor of it and it looks like everybody else is. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Webley? Uh, I'm going to vote in favor of this too, but I think that we did this general plan for a reason. We didn't do it because we expected exceptions. And I'm always troubled by, I, I get it that you want more homes and you want to fill a lot, but if you don't do it right to start with, then you're filled with a lot of lots that don't conform, and then we go back to the same problems we have with housing and neighborhoods that aren't built to the quality that this general plan envisions. So I, I'm troubled with this. I, I think the neighbors are all well-intentioned, but. At some point, we've got to step back and figure out that you either do it right the first time or then you're stuck with it. So I'll vote aye. Ms. Williams? Um, I'm voting aye, but I think our general plan is just that. I think it's general, and I think you make a good point, Tommy, in that um, we do hear mixed reviews, and when we have special exceptions, they are just that they're, they're exceptions, or when, when things come to us, um, we do have to look at them on a, on a case by case basis because our city is not cookie cutter, is anything but cookie cutter, and our lots and our homes are not cookie cutter. So we have unique situations and we have unique um, lot sizes and home sizes and things of that nature. Um, and I think new construction now is of a better quality than it was years ago when we we're dealing with some of the things. <laughs> I, I do. I think you know, new construction. I'm saying like 60s years ago. She's saying like 10 years ago. <laughs> even yeah, 10 years ago, or even you know some of the other things. But I think that the general plan is just that it's general. It's a roadmap, but there needs to be some leniency and some um, some leeway for us to make changes. And I think this goes to that. So I vote aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Public hearing three, please. <laughs> Public hearing three is scheduled for this day on the application of Norfolk premium outlets to amend the city's general plan to add section 11-54 to the zoning ordinance to create the Norfolk premium outlets localized alternative sign overlay district and for a change of zoning from open space preservation to light industrial to retail center and Norfolk premium outlets localized alternative sign overlay districts on property located at 6282 Northampton Boulevard by 6-0 vote planning commission recommends approval. 
All right, um, Mr. Richardson is here on behalf of the applicant, as is Randy Royal. If you, we may have some questions for you later. Um, there are two other members of the public who would like to address the council on this issue. William Jackson. Good evening, Mayor Frame and members of the city council. Again, I am William D. Jackson, Sr. I live at 3709 Buckingham Street in Norfolk, in the Esterbrook section of Norfolk. I'm here today to speak to the members of the civil... Oh, wrong one. That's the okay. one. I'm sorry. I'm here today to speak out against the destruction of the Lake Wright Golf Course and the rezoning of the property from open space preservation and one dash two light industrial districts to retail C3 retail center. My main concern here is the word preservation. I think it would be a shame for the Norfolk City Council to approve the rezoning of that property and allow for the destruction of a great golf course that served this city for 50 years. And for what? Another shopping mall. I might add that a large number of those citizens that play golf out there at that golf course are senior citizens that may not be able to pay $36 plus for a round of golf for a round of 18 holes when they could get a, an associate's membership at that golf course and play for $19, including the cart. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Edna Riddick. Good evening, Mayor Frame, members of City Council, City Manager Jones, City Attorney Pishko. Uh, Edna Riddick, 5500 Sandpiper Lane. Uh, I am a resident there. I own property at 5868 Northampton Boulevard, where my mother lives, which is directly beside the golf course. Uh, I came here on... July 22nd to address my concerns about the golf course. Well, about the golf course and the Lake Wright Outlet Mall, the Outlet Mall and Lake Wright. My concern now is we have seen the beginning of problems on Northampton Boulevard. My concern is right now the grass isn't cut on the golf course. Today, I noticed someone did come along Northampton Boulevard, cut the grass. In the city of Norfolk, there is a ruling or a code that the grass at 12 inches needs to be cut. And city codes comes out and enforces residents to cut their grass. I'd like to know if that same ordinance or that same uh, code will be enforced with the Lake Wright Golf Course. We have uh, mosquitoes. The area right now is being inundated with mosquitoes and concerns about mosquitoes. Once the construction starts, we're gonna have problems with rodents. But my biggest concern now is to think that you can ride down Northampton Boulevard and look to the right and you see the beautiful, pristine golf course that was once there, and now you see weeds, grass, and no one has even attempted to, to try to do anything with it. My concern is for the residents who are right beside the golf course, if you could treat the golf course, especially that, I guess it's what, the, the buffer area that Simon is proposing. Treat that with mosquito control, cut the grass, and keep the grass cut on Northampton Boulevard. I, I know I can't stop the outlet mall, but I certainly can fight right. for having the grass cut and mosquito control. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, I, uh, Mr. Manager, that was a... You're there. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other questions for anyone? Are you call the roll, please. I have three ordinances for this, Mr. President. The first is an ordinance to amend Chapter 11 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Norfolk, 1992, so as to create 
the Norfolk Premium Outlets Localized Alternative Sign Overlay District dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance to amend the city's general plan so as to change the land use designation on properties located at 6282 Northampton Boulevard from office and open space recreational to commercial. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Third is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 68-6282 Northampton Boulevard from open space preservation and light industrial to C3 Retail Center and Norfolk Premium Outlets localized alternative sign overlay districts. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. Public hearing number four, please. Public hearing four scheduled for this day on the application of Sentara Healthcare for a text amendment to the zoning ordinance to add section 11-55 to create the Sentara Lee local, localized alternative sign overlay district and for a change of zoning to adopt the Sentara Lee Lasso district on property located at 844, 880, and 890 Kempsville Road and 6241 East Virginia Beach Boulevard by 6 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. All right, and Mr. Scott Campbell is here to answer questions, as is Eric Young from, uh, from Lee, for the hospital. All right, call the roll. I have two ordinances for this. The first is an ordinance to amend Chapter 11 of the zoning ordinance so as to create the Sentara Lee localized alternative sign overlay district, dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance to apply the Sentara Lee localized alternative sign overlay district to properties located at 844, 880, and 890 Kempsville Road and 6241 East Virginia Beach Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing five, please. Public hearing five scheduled for this day on the application of Scott B. Konikoff for the closing, vacating, and discontinuing of an 18-foot lane on the south side of East Ocean View Avenue, 150 feet more or less in length, line east of Cape View Avenue and east of Lot 10 and Block 11 of the plat of part of property of Bayview Beach Corporation by 6-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. You can call the roll. I have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing an unnamed 18-foot lane east of Cape View Avenue, authorizing the conveyance to the abutting property owners of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said unnamed 18-foot lane, contingent upon satisfaction of certain conditions. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing six. Public hearing six, scheduled for this day on the application of the Planning Commission for a text amendment to Section 10-16 Granby Monticello Court or mixed use of the city's zoning ordinance to add and amend terms, simplify language, adjust development standards, and consider historic properties, and they recommend it by 6-0 vote. And I have an ordinance to amend Section 10-16 of the zoning ordinance so as to simplify language, adjust regulations and development standards, and better accommodate existing historic buildings in the Granby Monticello Quarter Mixed Use District. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Are we ready for our one? Yes, sir. Okay. R1. An ordinance granting a special exception to V Wars Inc. authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment named Cafe Affairs on property located at 333 West 21st Street, Suite 333. The commission recommends approval by 6 0 vote. Great. And Marlene Murphy's here to answer questions if anyone has any. Okay, you can call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2, please. An ordinance granting a special exception to Kel Clark, Inc., authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment named Harbor Inn on property located at 7924 Chesapeake Boulevard, Suite F. Planning Commission recommends approval by 6 0 vote. Okay. Um, we have a bunch of folks who are down here this evening to speak on this matter. 
Um, there are at least 12 folks who have signed up to speak. They are all proponents. We don't have anybody here who is, uh, like at the Planning Commission, is, is here to take the issue on. There are another uh, dozen and look, look who are also here who have signed up to indicate their support, but they, um, they are proponents but don't wish to speak. So uh, unless somebody really has a burning uh, desire to get to the microphone, I think we're ready to go. I think so. All right. Council have any questions? Mr. Jones, you okay? We can move ahead. Okay. You can call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? I'm going to say the same thing that I say to everybody that comes in the Ward 5. But you're already there. You're just moving. That's right. Just be good neighbors. Um, I know you're moving to that's a section that's a little bit different. There's some other establishments there. And I think you guys operate a good establishment, so just keep it that way. And if you hear complaints from the community, work with them and address it. But thank you. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you for not all speaking, by the way. Boy, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's your, that's your help uh, evening, I, I can promise you. We'll leave now. We'll get Brock. <laughs> it was worth a couple votes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for coming down. Okay. We're good. Thank you. I changed my vote. <laughs> if Garford was here, you want to I know, Garford, right? <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Okay, thank you. Okay, R3. An ordinance authorizing the Hermitage Museum and Gardens to place four directional parking signs in the median along Hampton Boulevard between North Shore Road and Glen Eagles Road and one directional parking sign in the verge along Hampton Boulevard near the intersection of Daniel Avenue, subject to certain terms and conditions. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Portazero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4? An ordinance accepting a $539,441 Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Environmental Quality Stormwater Local Assistance Fund grant for the design and construction of four water quality improvement projects appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the said amount for the water quality improvement projects and authorizing the expenditure of $269,720.50 from local cash matching funds for the project. Um, there's no one here to oppose th this matter, but Mr. Harris has signed up to speak if he'd like to. Mr. Harris, are you okay? We're glad to hear from you if you'd like. Okay, and then he'll be followed by Joe Cook. Okay. This is the uh, stormwater funds. All right. Hello, Mr. Harris. How you doing, man? Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Good evening, my family and members of the city council. I'm here for a good reason. I support what Mr. Speaker said about the clean air and water. But I don't think Norfolk Southern does. Mm -mm. I've been in Lambert's Point community for 38 years. I have yet to see anyone from the Norfolk Southern, even in the community, or to a civil league. But yet the residents are steady even coal dust day in and day out. You can look on the houses around in there, over there in Lambert's Point. You can see where the coal dust is settling in on the houses. I had to wash my house three or four times. I'm 75 years old. I can't afford to pay $150 to have my house clean because the dust is coming from the coal cars and running it. So we need to do something about it. And you at Councilman, we hold you responsible for doing something. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, I will sure. tell you that Norfolk Southern is going to call you this month because they want to come out to your Civic League. I can okay. put it on schedule for a October. That's a full book for September. That's they want to come out then. All right. Hey, Frey, member of the council. My name is Joe Cook. I live at 1147 Story Crescent. I too come today and speak in favor of the city's acceptance of the DEQ grant for $539,000 for water quality improvement. I applaud the city and staff for caring about water quality and meeting regulatory mandates from DEQ and the EPA. I only wish that the same concern for air, soil, and water quality was exhibited when it comes to coal dust. But <coughs> DEQ has chosen to exempt Lambert's Point Terminal from the Clean Air Act because it was built before 1972. Since DEQ won't protect us 
and our property from the toxic coal dust, then the 270 petitioners that you have, who have contacted you and want the city to go on record with the resolution proposed by Councilman Smeagle in June asking for mitigation measures by Norfolk Southern, then do it on moral and, and good neighbor grounds. Ask them to do it. That would entail enclosing the dumpers and the conveyors and covering the coal cars, plus getting a community health impact assessment by VDH. If anyone dumped coal dust on your property, you would likely call the police and want them charged with illegal dumping of a hazardous substance. Yet Norfolk Southern dumped 90,000 pounds of coal dust last year on all of us and into the Elizabeth River which has accumulated over 100 years into millions of tons of coal dust. Now consider the facts and the scientific evidence on this. The evidence is there, and, I, and some people are ignoring it. ODU published a peer-reviewed article in 2007 that found what, just like Mr. Harris said, black grit on cars, window sills, plants, and neighboring communities that covers them. I know Dr. Wibley gets coal dust on her, around her house. I'm sure the mayor does. I do. There, it's, it's, uh, it's pervasive. Soil samples from throughout the city contained up to 20% coal by weight. High coal levels found in soil samples around railroad tracks. Arsenic, which has a carcinogen and a neurotoxin measured at levels in Norfolk at five times higher than background soil concentration nearby. Coal dust contains arsenic, mercury, lead, and other heavy metals, which have been linked to low birth rate, premature birth, neurodevelopmental delays in children, lung cancer, pneumonia, emphysema, bronchitis, asthma attacks, heart disease, and strokes, and premature death. It's all documented in the letter that Mr. Smeagle sent to you, if you would just only read it. Even though Norfolk Southern has known for years of excessive coal dust air pollution from its terminal operation, is documented by its own consultant and repeatedly by DEQ for failing to minimize emissions. It has continued to ignore recommendations from both entities for enclosing the dumpers and putting in a dust collection system. The Dan grandfather clause exemption by DEQ effectively allows unlimited release of coal dust. Also, North Southern's ambient air monitor next door at HRSD and its claim to comply with EPA standards for a particulate matter in general does in no way reflect the toxic content of the particles or actual air quality in nearby neighborhoods since no independent monitoring and particle testing takes place in those areas. The potential for arsenic poisoning of children nearby exists as a real threat in the contaminated soil at five times normal background levels in those adjacent areas. As such, I come tonight presenting to you a petition on behalf of the 270 signatories and the 200 people who attended two forums. And unfortunately, I didn't see any of you there at the forum, although Mr. Smeagle did listen to us after the fact. It would be nice to see the, some members of the city council come out and go into the neighborhood, go down with Mr. Harris. Come with me, I'll show you coal dust this, the, uh, there. And uh, so I ask you to pass the resolution proposed by Councilman Smeagle, and please don't continue to put corporate profits before the environmental health of Norfolk residents. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Cook. You can call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to negotiate a memorandum of agreement in substantial conformity with the terms and conditions of the attached uh, memorandum of agreement between the city and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to conduct dredging services at the terminus of West, West York Street adjacent to the Brambleton Avenue Bridge and authorizing the city manager to accept $750,000 from NOAA to procure such dredging services. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 
R6, an ordinance permitting Michael Remington to encroach into By County Road right of way at 1355 Eagle Avenue with an existing concrete and asphalt driveway. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance permitting New York Fashion Organization, Inc., trading as NYFO Boutique, to encroach eight inches into the right of way of West 22nd Street at 322 West 22nd Street with a 60 inches by 17 inches sign. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Is it R8? An ordinance permitting Pretty Lake at East Beach, Inc. to encroach eight inches plus or minus with Box Bay bump outs and three feet plus or minus with roof overhang into a 20-foot drainage easement at 94, 17, 21, 29, 33, 27th Bay Street and 94, 24, 28, 36, and 40, 26 Bay Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or nine? An ordinance permitting TAC Acquisitions, LLC, to encroach into Alney Road right-of-way, 5 feet 6 inches plus or minus with an existing double-sided sign, the bottom of which is 12 feet 4 inches above the ground at 776 Granby Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10? A resolution approving the establishment and operation of American Medical Response Mid-Atlantic, Inc., to provide non-911 emergency medical services for medical facilities and individuals in the city. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R11. An ordinance amending ordinance number 45355, accepting and appropriating $729,210 from the Virginia Department of Fire Programs for the Aid to Localities Program for fiscal year 2014. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R12. An ordinance accepting and appropriating up to the sum of $729,210 from the Virginia Department of Fire Programs for the Aid to Localities Program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13. An ordinance approved the conveyance by the City of Virginia Beach to the City of Norfolk of certain property located in the City of Virginia Beach, constituting a weir separating Lake Smith and Little Creek Reservoir, subject to the reservation by the City of Virginia Beach of an easement across the paved portion of the weir property and authorizing the City Manager to accept the deed on behalf of the City of Norfolk. Mr. James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, Mr. Jones. Uh, my name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Ken Lake Place here in the city of Norfolk. Um, I did ask some questions about this because I had a little bit of a concern about whether or not there was anything happening that would interfere with our excellent water supply and shallow surface water. The other part of my concern was that I wanted to be sure there was nothing contained in this that would further complicate the desires of the fishermen who have been shoved out of Lake Whitehurst. Um, now that the boat launch uh, facility is gone, Lake Smith is the last remaining option on the north side of uh, Hampton Roads uh, from the standpoint of where the people who do a lot of fishing can go. And so I'm being, I have been assured that uh, nothing in this particular ordinance interferes with it. It's just simply a an easement that's being granted by the city of Virginia Beach to Norfolk. So I just wanted to at least let you know what some of the concerns of the people out in the area were. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And Ellis, um, city council budgeted two years ago money 
to replace the boat ramp in a different location. Right. That it's been delayed because of the Dominion Power transmission line replacement, and hopefully soon we'll get an update on their status. They just have to complete an underground wiring. I know they're finished with the overhead, but now they're doing underground, and hopefully we can get started soon on that new boat ramp. Right. Well, thank you for that information. I know there'll be a, quite a few people who will be pleased to hear that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegera? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R14. An ordinance finding a public necessity for the acquisition of permanent easements and temporary construction easements over certain parcels of property located in the cities of Chesapeake and Portsmouth for the purpose of replacing the City of Norfolk's 36-inch raw water main that crosses the western branch of the Elizabeth River, authorizing the acquisition of the easements by either purchase agreement or condemnation, authorizing the release of any portions of the existing waterline easement no longer needed by the City of Norfolk, and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of up to $100,000 from funds heretofore appropriated for acquisition of the easements and for all related transactional costs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R15. An ordinance granting Winston II LLC trading as the Green Onion permission to encroach into the right of way at 1601 through 1603 Collie Avenue and approving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Dis dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 16. An ordinance approving the conveyance to the City of Norfolk by Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority of a certain parcel of property that's currently part of the Huntersville 2 redevelopment project and authorizing the City Manager to accept the deed on behalf of the City. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 17. An ordinance approving an amendment to the garage parking agreement between the City of Norfolk and WBG Financial Investment and Capital LLC so as to change the status of the parking spaces from reserved to unreserved and to adjust the parking fees accordingly. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And let the record reflect that Mr. Hen was here on behalf of the applicant. Rick Hen. Okay. R18. An ordinance approving a license agreement with Pickett Road Enterprises for the use of certain space at 5585 Sabre Road. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R19. An ordinance accepting a grant in the amount of $1,170,308 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for the Norfolk Criminal Justice Services Agency appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds in the said amount, authorizing the expenditure of $158,932 in local funding for the NCJS agency, and authorizing the employment of 19 persons for the agency and providing funds for their salaries and benefits. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 20? An ordinance accepting a victim witness grant award of $347,162 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for continuation of the Victim Witness Assistance Program, appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds for the program, and authorizing the hiring of eight persons for the program in a special project employment status. Right, and Betsy Powell from the Norfolk Commonwealth Attorney's Office is here if we have any questions. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R21. A resolution approving the amendment and restatement of each of the creation agreement and service agreement of the Hampton Roads Regional Jail Authority. Ellis James? No. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Mr. Jones. Um, I just wanted to add my support as a citizen for the resolution. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Protojiru for having done what I consider to be a very helpful thing in the informal session. Uh, your review of what the situation was and your response uh, 
uh, was helpful to a citizen. I wasn't certain where this was uh, going and what it would, uh, how much it would involve the question of uh, those detainees, especially the 400. Um, and your explanation, I really appreciate it, so I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you for that acknowledgement, Mr. James. Thank you. Shall okay, call. call the roll. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, Andy, did you say the Chesapeake's already moving people in? Mm -hmm. That's great. All right, R22. A resolution approving the Norfolk Community Service Board's performance contract with the Commonwealth for fiscal year 2015, renewable by mutual agreement for fiscal year 2016. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R23. An ordinance approving the amended and restated Declaration of Covenants, Conditions, Restrictions, and Easements of the Lafayette Shores Homeowners Association. Uh, uh, dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. I have one additional item, a resolution numbered R24, and it's a resolution appointing Nikita Houchins to the Norfolk City Planning Commission for a certain term. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda. Thank you.